here last week and got to hear Ben's message on the kingdom. That was one of the best messages I have heard. It was like so simple. I feel loud. Am I too loud? It was um, so simple but so profound. Isn't that how Jesus taught? He taught like so simple but it changed your life. And if you didn't get to hear it, go online and listen to it. But he um, was teaching about the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added unto us. But he went into detail about what that looks like. And, And he talked about how we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And that is such a big part. And for those who aren't here, I'll just do a quick review. That's such a big part of it because... When we see God in ourselves, we're always, we're never measuring up in any way. You know, it's never enough. We're never seeking him enough. We're never praying enough. We're never reading our Bible enough. We never um, are good enough. I mean, just, it's never enough. But as we seek the kingdom and his righteousness, he comes in us in his righteousness, we're always more than enough. And the word, that is where the power is. And so Ben was talking about last week that God's kingdom, what does that mean, his kingdom? We hear it all the time. The kingdom is God, his word, and his people. That is what the kingdom is. When we're with God, when we're reading God's word and dwelling with God, and when we're with each other, that is the kingdom, and we all carry it. And And you could go deeply into each one and talk about how you seek that, how you seek people, how you seek the word, how you seek God. But today, I want to continue on and talk about the word of God and how we seek first God and how we seek his word and how everything is added unto us when we seek the word of God. So let's pray. God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that you are easy. Relationship with you is easy. It brings us life. It brings us joy. Even as Ben said in worship, your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. You give us joy for our strength, God. And I just thank you. There's so many heavy things we have to deal with in this world. But you're, you aren't one of them. You are easy. And relationship with you is fun. And it's easy. And I thank you. And I, I thank you for your kingdom. And I thank you for your word that you have equipped us to have an abundant life. And I just pray this morning as I teach, I thank you that you have given me authority and power on my tongue, not just to teach a message, but God, we want our lives changed. Every time we come together, we have expectation that you're radically changing our heart for transformation that takes us into a new glory. God, we want a new glory. For Monday morning, we just walk into that glory that you have for us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So seeking first the kingdom of God, that's kind of our, is going to be our theme this year because the Lord really spoke to me in January. I want you to focus more on me. Just focus on me. Keep your eyes on me, baby girl, and everything's going to be okay. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus because Blessing is coming, increase is coming, goodness is coming, and it's so easy to get distracted on the things and keep our eyes off him, and we have to stay focused on him because those things destroy us without him. It's him, and it has to be him. He's the only thing that can truly bring us life. So the word of God, I love the word of God. I'm a lover of the word. I will have more teachings on than worship. I love hearing the word. I love meditating on the word. This this Bible and me have history in the Holy Spirit. This is what has gotten me out of so many tough situations and made me who I am. I was thinking this morning, the 20-year-old Kara would have never attracted this amazing husband or the friends I have. I didn't get married till 25. Praise God, because the Holy Spirit had a lot of work in me. And reading the word and spending time with God is what matured me and grew me to attract what I really needed in in my life. 
So the word of God keeps us stable in a very unstable world. We can count on the word of God. It's never changing. God never changes. His word never changes. Isaiah 48 says that, and it's all throughout the Bible. God never changes. Does that not bring so much comfort to you? Because people change. Jobs change. Relationships change. This world is ever changing. But I can stand firm on God and his word. And a new heaven and earth, and I'm not going to even go into that theology, but just so you know, there's a new heaven and a new earth coming. <laughs> but his word will never change. And she was just saying, Mom, I can't believe it, but the word that was written was not in anybody's language. So nobody could read it but the priest. So they totally depended on the priest to tell him the interpretation of the word. And if he was corrupt, he would twist it to do, and there was no accountability. And we are so blessed because we are called to read the word for ourselves. You know, when we come to church on Sunday, I love gathering together. God, this is community. That the people is a part of the kingdom. We need each other. Just so you know, we all have blind spots, and we need each other to hold each other accountable. But this should be icing on the cake. We should all be baking our cake with God. I'm a baker, so I'm going to use that analogy. <laughs> Throughout the week, and then the sermon is just icing on the cake, the history and what you've cultivated with the Holy Spirit. You know, we have to read the word for ourselves because this is how God communicates. Amen. It's the main way how God communicates and to know his heart and hear his heart. John 1.1, 1, 1. well, let, let me just read this real quick. Turn with me to John 1.1, 1, 1, or you can just listen. John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, the word already existed. He was with God, and he was God, and he was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, so the word became human and lived here on earth among them, and he was full of un failing love and faithfulness. Who is the word of God? Jesus Christ. He is the word of God and he dwelt among us. Flesh came on the word of God. Jesus is the word. Amen. They are together. They are one. He's the word. And as we read the word, we are seeking Jesus. This is his heart. This is how we know him. Seek first the kingdom of God means meditating on the word of God learning the word of God, understanding how God communicates. This is God's main way of communicating is through the word. And, and, and God will take the word and he'll use it in a prophetic word, maybe a dream. I can't tell you how many times in a dream the Lord has led me to a scripture to read the next morning when I wake up. If we are seeking out the word, God has a fresh word for you every single morning waiting in his word. Sometimes we're just looking for somebody to give us a word. Somebody tell me what to do. It's here. As you read the word, the Holy Spirit teaches you and gives you exactly what you need for that day. And it's daily. We need his word daily. I don't know about you, but I do. I need that word for that day. When you're doing big things for God and you're dreaming for God and you're going after God, you need it. Every day, what God is speaking and he wants to speak to you. It's amazing to hear secondhand words. I love prophetic words. Give them to me. But nothing replaces the firsthand encounter you can have with God and he wants with us. And you, you grow into that. You grow into that. Um, and as we know God's word through his righteousness, and that's key right there, you have to read his word through his righteousness. Because as you read his word through his righteousness, you understand the true heart of God in our life. 
And so then when something else comes and it contradicts, it contradicts, you get a word that's not from the Lord, you know, mm, that doesn't sound like my God. And you know that you can love a person and reject the word, just so you know. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And we can all miss it. That's why we need to know the word. Or maybe somebody gives you the word and you know it's not the right timing. You know, I feel like prophetic words, as you grow in the Lord, prophetic words and Sunday morning sermons should almost be confirmation to what the Holy Spirit is always teaching you. Right? There was one time I was going through a very, very heavy situation, and the Lord came to me a dream and gave me a song of songs, a scripture and song of songs. In the dream, I walked up to the pulpit, I opened up the Bible, and I read song of songs, and it said, um... Winter time is over, spring time is coming. And in it set me free. It was, it was a word, it was a rhema word that set me free. Now, nothing changed in the natural. It never starts there. But it transformed my heart. It gave me hope. I, I got into a place of hopelessness. It gave me hope, and then everything started changing. Anyways, I went to church that Sunday, and guess what? There was a guest speaker. He opened up the Bible and read the very same scripture. And that should be normal. You know, that should be normal. It's like confirmation. But it's because we're in our word and we're spending time with God that when we hear a message, it's like, oh yeah, God is already speaking that. I know that's God. That's confirmation in my life. And it brings us peace. Seeking God is seeking his word. Um, Okay, I want to talk about something that I'm not an expert in, okay? So I have Nick here to correct me. <laughs> but a few years ago, I learned about the reticular activating system. Is that right? All right, that's a big word, but I'm just going to do it in layman words to make it very easy for us. But this is so important to what I'm teaching. So the reticular, reticular activating system is almost like a filter for our mind. So let me explain this. Is that up? Okay. There is so much going on in the world and around us all the time, like details, images, things going on all the time, that our mind would be overloaded if we could take it all in. You know what I mean? Like if right now I'm thinking about, okay, everybody's hair color, everybody eye color, I mean, different sounds. All of this, our mind is just too much. There's so much going on all the time. And so what our reticular activating system does is like a filter. And what it does is it helps you focus on what is most important to you. What is in your subconscious, it will attract, whether good or bad. Okay, so follow me here. If, if something's really important to you or you've been thinking about something you will always find that or see it or draw it to you, almost like the law of attraction. Am I saying this right? Okay, so this is what is so powerful. When we know God's word, when we're in God's word, our reticular activating system will draw that to our life, meaning the more we understand God's word, the more I believe we hear God's voice. Because I think God is speaking all the time to everybody. He has no favorites. He loves all of us. He loves all of us, and he wants to talk to all of us intimately. And I believe the more we know his word, it's not like he's like, okay, now I'm going to bless you and speak to you. The more we know his word, the more we hear what he's already been speaking all the time. Because we're attracting it. Does that make sense? Whatever you focus on, whatever you're thinking about, you're going to attract. That's what I was saying. When I was 20, praise God, the Lord did not bring my husband. It would have been the wrong one. I would have attracted the wrong one. And also, when I was 20, he was like 15 and a half. So, <laughs> so praise God for that too. <laughs> but you know, sometimes 
We want things that we think we're ready for, and God's like, you're not ready for it. Because God has us here, and we're here, and we don't know why it's coming. But we attract, you know, we'll attract the wrong thing. I attracted a lot of the wrong things in my life. But it was in that season where God's like, you know what, marry me. I'm going to be your husband. You're going to feast on the word, and I'm going to transform your heart. And by doing that, things, I just started attracting goodness. Goodness. Because I could hear God's voice. God's word is so very powerful, and we need it. And so many times, believers are only getting it secondhand. Oh, I heard this podcast. I heard this teaching. I went to church. You're missing the intimacy that God wants. It's intimacy. It's relationship, right? If I only talk to Ben through our kids or through a friend, not very intimate and not very close. But so many believers live their life like that. Whether they think, you know, I can't understand it or God won't speak to me or, or whatever the lie is or the religion is. God says, boldly come into my throne room through his righteousness, any one of us, any time. And we enter his throne room through his word. This is such a main way that we hear God's voice. Okay, so reading the word is not religious, it's not duty, it's relationship. And we have to focus on that because when we feel like it's a have to, oh, it kills it. It's death. But when we view it as I'm coming and spending time with God and God has something so important to tell me and trust me, it's way better to let him do most of the talking. He loves to hear us, but, you know, give him a chance. Don't be that friend that takes the whole time talking about themselves and they have no room to share. Because <laughs> God has so much to tell us. And sometimes we get in with our prayer, tell God what we need, what we want, what's going on, and we're out of there. And he's like, okay, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> you know? And he has so much to tell us. One word from God sets us free. One word from God. And it is so much more powerful than word even from each other. You know, our words can be confirmation to that. And as we read the word, we are self-feeding ourselves and, and, and creating revival in our hearts. We always tell Bible school um, students, you know, you're in Bible school and there's a big bonfire built for you every single day. So, of course, you're thriving, you know. I mean, you're getting the best teachings and you're just, surrounded by so much teaching, but you're graduating. Can you build your own fire? You have to learn to build your own fire because things will get really depressing really quickly, and that is something that's so important to learn because people get all excited on fire for God, but then when Bible school's done or that great conference is over or whatever it is, the next spiritual high of jumping from here to here to here, can you cultivate it with the Lord alone? And I don't know about you, and I bet many of you will agree, my most amazing times are in the secret place with the Lord, Amen. not at some conference. Yeah. Sure. It is those times where it's me and God, and we are raw, and I'm genuine, and I'm vulnerable, and he speaks to my heart. Those are the times that change us the most. So building your own fire. Joelle says my, is that better, Joelle? Thank you. The word keeps us grounded from being flaky and immature. Let's just get to it. Let me read something to you. I'm going to say some things today. Yeah, and it's for me too, just so you know. I'm right there with you. We need the word. Things can get flaky really fast. The word keeps us grounded. Okay, turn with me to Hebrews 4.12. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Am I in Hebrews? Oh, yeah. Hebrews 4.12. Okay. For the word of the Lord is full of living power. And your Bible might say living and breathing. It is sharper than the sharpest knife, cutting deep into our innermost 
thoughts, and desires. It exposes us for who we really are. Nothing in all of creation can hide from him. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. This is the God whom we must explain all that we have done. Okay, that's a little scary right there. It's a little scary right there because when we read the word and we open our hearts before the Lord, this is the power the word has. But I just want to go into 13 because this is seeking God and then his righteousness. And I want to back it up with this because 14, it says, this is why we have a high priest who has gone to heaven, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let's cling to him and never stop trusting. The high priest who understands our weakness, for he faced all the same temptations, yet did not sin. So let's come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we received his mercy, and we will find grace to help when we need it. These scriptures go together because, listen, the word is so powerful And it's kind of like that hurt so good. Do you know what I mean? Hurt but so good. Meaning the conviction of the Holy Spirit is like, you're right, God. You're right, God. And and change is hard, right? Nobody likes their junk pointed out. Let's be honest, right? But we need it. And that's what the word does. It goes deep, deep past our own thoughts, our own understanding, our own emotions. When we think everything's okay, no, this is okay. And the word's like, yeah. And exposes us and God pulls back all of the lies and all of the things that keep us bound and said, this is what's really going on in your heart. Are you ready to deal with it? Because I am your high priest. I know it's hard. I know your weakness, and I'm gracious, and I'm loving, and I'm going to help you. You need them together, because I surely don't want to be exposed and naked before the Lord without being in his righteousness. Amen. In my own righteousness, it's death. I'm defeated. But we have a great high priest who sympathizes with us and loves us and has the answer. But we need the word to show us truth all the time. It is so easy to get in deception, right? It's so easy to miss it. But the word keeps us grounded, helps us from being flaky, and matures us. That's why we need the word. He speaks to us and he grows us up. It's fresh water. It's nutrients every day, eating and and growing in the Lord. It's not just knowing the word, it's doing the word. That's just the first step. (laughs) It's not just knowing the word, but then it's doing the word. And that's the big difference right there of living the abundant life or not. A lot of people know the word, but not doing the word. And it causes a lot of frustration because you know the word, you know God is good, you know he has the promises, but why aren't you seeing it? And I have found in my own life, it's because I haven't obeyed the last thing the Lord told me to do. It's obedience of the word is what really creates the blessing in our life. It's the action to the word. We have to know the word but we have to obey the word. Because when we just know the word and don't do the word, we actually discredit the kingdom of God. You know, and uh, we can look really religious really fast by just quoting some scripture. And we can put the best scripture on social media every single day and just impress everybody. But we're known by our fruit. And just quoting scripture is not going to produce the fruit. But if I'm going to put a scripture on social media or I'm going to meditate on a scripture, then I need the Holy Spirit to help me walk out that scripture. Right? Or it's just religion. And it's a discredit to the kingdom. And it causes frustration in my life and people around me. Isn't that true? Um, Matthew 7 Let's turn to Matthew 7. Verse 24. 
anyone who listens to my teachings, and I think I have a picture up for this, anyone who listens to my teachings and obeys me is wise. It's like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the water, flood water rise, and the wind beats against it, the house will not collapse because it's built on the rock. Anyone who hears my teaching, okay, get this, this is believers, this is believers, they're hearing the word, they're hearing the teaching, and ignores it as foolish. It's like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and flood comes, the winds beat against the house, it will fall with a mighty crash. It's not just about knowing the word, but then doing the word. You like that? The thing is, is that so many of us, so many believers can be there, and we're saying, we love Jesus. Jesus is so good. And the world's like, I don't know. I don't want to know that Jesus. Right? I mean, let's just be honest. I'm not saying we don't have hard times. (laughs) I'm not saying that. But there's fruit in our lives. And that is not just material things means that I have joy. I'm, I'm a fun person to be around. People like to be around me. That's a good indicator. That's a good indicator. I can love people. I can forgive easily. I can overlook offense. The relationships around me are good, right? I mean, I can have a good marriage. I can have friends around me. This, this is fruit of the kingdom, of me obeying the word. Because the kingdom is God, his word, and people. <laughs> I have a good relationship with God and a good relationship with people. That's, that's such a big part of obeying the word and seeing fruit in our lives. Seeking first the kingdom of God and learning to not move until he tells you to move. Not to do until he tells you to do. He can save us from so many mistakes. Um, there was recently, there's so many times that the word of the Lord has spared me from things and it's just being with God for that day. What are we going to do today? Talking to the Lord. There was a big conference, um, that everybody was talking about, like this huge conference. You can't miss it. Like it's, it's going to change your life. There's like one every weekend, right? (laughs) But you know, and you can have that FOMO, that fear of missing out, like, I missed out, but just so you know, even if you miss it, you have the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you exactly what you need. But I had gotten my tickets, and I was going to go, and the Lord's like, don't go. What? I want my life changed. Don't go. I'm like, okay. I know now enough. I would have battled it more 20 years ago. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning to listen. Because I've made some big mistakes. And I just want to let you know, God is an amazing janitor. But he's a better builder. He has cleaned up so many messes in my life. He's so good at it. But I would rather stop wasting God time of cleaning up messes and let's start building. Because we can spend the whole life, God, cleaning up mess after mess after mess after mess. He loves us. But God, let's build. Let me just listen the first time, right? So I didn't go to the conference, and later God told me why. And he didn't have to. You know, sometimes he didn't have to tell us the why. That's faith. That's trust, right? He didn't tell me the why, but later he did tell me the why. I was like, oh, thank you. You're so good. He knows so much more than we know. Just listen to him. Just do it. It's so much easier. If I had went to the conference, does God love me? Yes. Would I have gotten something out of it? Probably. But it would grieve my heart to not obey him when he's so loving and so good. Anyways, there was another thing coming up, the business mentorship. And Ben just got back from Kenya, and we were just going to come for a little bit and not stay for the whole thing. And God says, I want you there the whole day. I'm like, oh, this is hard because I don't know if my husband wants to stay, and Ben hasn't seen the kids. And Because even when Ben got back on Thursday, we had the, uh, the person traveling with him all there Friday, and so we just didn't have any family time. It just was not convenient. Does God ever do that to you? But I was obedient. And I told Ben, I really feel like I need to be here. God rocked my world. God spoke to me and transformed some things in my life from being there. God knows. We just have to listen and we have to hear his word. And it comes from 
knowing his word to recognize his voice in our life. The more grounded and more we know of his word, the more you'll start hearing him in so many ways. And it saves you from so much. I was reading this week in Joshua, and I'm going to end with this. Reading this week in in Joshua about the Gibeonites. Now, God told Joshua to go in and conquer the land, right? Conquer, conquer, and take all the land. Well, the Gibeonites got real smart, and they knew they were going to die. So they pretended they were from a far-off land, and they got these shoes, that just these old shoes and raggedy clothes, and they got stale, moldy bread and wrapped it up, and they got wineskins that were old, and it was leaking out the wine, and they come, and they're like, we're from a far-off land. We're so innocent. Will you make covenant with us and treaty with us? We love you. We'll love your God. And it says that Joshua did not consult with the Lord. And he got tricked big time. They were not far off. They were close. And and he was not supposed to make covenant with them. And the Lord just again was reiterating to my heart, just listen to me, consult with me. It is so worth the time. Invest in asking God, are you okay with this? What do you think about this? The smallest detail in our life, God knows. The things that you think God doesn't care about, he does. He does. Involve him with your time. Your time is so precious. Where do you want me to be? Who do you want me to meet with? How do you want me to spend my day? These are so very important. And I'm going to tell you something. I hope Ben teaches this next week, but who you hang around is who you become. Your people, whoever your people is, is who you will become. The people closest to you, you really will become like that. That's why I try to hang out with smarter people than me. (laughs) You know, I want to rise up to that level. But being choosy, who you hang around but how you spend your time, and God knows what's best for you. Even if something looks so amazing, and God says no, trust it. And something that looks like, ah, it might be inconvenient, it's the worst timing ever. And he says go, or be a part of it, or do it, do it. Always just listen to the Lord. It just saves so much trouble. Okay, so I'm going to end with this. The Israelites, it says that they knew the word, but they didn't do the word. We saw where that got them. It's not good. But the next generation, it says they didn't even know the word of the Lord. I was meditating on that, and I was thinking, God, if this generation is always spewing out the word of God, putting on social media, telling our kids the word of God, but we're never doing the word of God. They're not seeing the fruit of it. Well, then they grow up and not even want to hear the word of God. Think about that. Because one generation after is like, I can't even hear that. It doesn't work. God doesn't work. Where are the miracles? You're defeated all the time. And it wasn't because the word of God isn't real and living and alive. It's because they wouldn't obey the word. We have to be doers of the word. It produces so much blessing, and that is seeking first the kingdom of God. You know, the word of God is a bunch of building material. It's like going to Home Depot and just checking out the building material. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. But until we start doing the word and building something, it's nothing in our lives. Seeking the word out, let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. It's having a teachable heart. It's not just reading the word. Okay, I got it done. I got it done. I got it done. Don't do that. It's living and breathing. You say, Holy Spirit, you're my teacher. You know what I need. Show me something today. He's so excited. He's our encourager. He's our teacher. And some of us have fired him a long time ago. Get him back in the classroom. Get him back in your God time and say, teach me something. I'm telling you, you will never be disappointed. He will always teach you something. We'll be doers of the word and we'll create something so beautiful for the Lord.
and legacy for our kids. Meaning that when I say the word of the Lord, my kids see that the word of the Lord is true because they see the fruit of it in my life. Amen? 